some projects are so easy and so valuable to recommend, it's just a no-brainer. Like this wash basin. Putting in the largest possible wash utility tub and maybe even putting it outdoors, amazing. Cheap, easy, perfect. Upgrading your parts washer, no, giant pain in the tushy. Um, so what am I gonna tell you about today? I'm gonna tell you about this. Cause this is easy and you should just do it. And this one is hard and maybe you shouldn't. So let's take a look. Here is how the parts washer looked when I got it. I bought it used on Craigslist for about one third of what it cost brand new. And this particular one was brand new. Here's how it looks on the inside. Uh, you can see there's a pump over on the right with a little nozzle. That normally would be closed right there. And um, that pump has a little foam filter. Here's some shelves to wash parts, and then here's the drain. So normally the parts washer would be totally full of solvent, and you would be able to drain it out through this drain hole right here. This is a standard M14 drain plug. It's found on a lot of uh, European or Asian cars. The issue that I have with this parts washer as it comes is that normally it would be full of five or maybe even 10 gallons of solvent. And I have this outside next to my house. Um, so it's just kind of risky to have basically five to 10 gallons of what is essentially kerosene sitting outside. It's a fire hazard. It's also an environmental hazard with outgassing um, VOCs and uh, potentially a hazard to health of, you know, the animals or small children that I have running around outside of my house. As you can see on the inside of the parts washer, the way it originally came, we have a foam filter right here and then a submersible pump behind that. So this thing is very simple, very straightforward, and, um, you know, this is how they're able to make it for so cheap. However, I don't love this design, again, because it requires that there is five to 10 gallons of solvent in the top at all times for it to run. And um, it's just not very flexible design. I originally thought that I would reuse this, this pump and put it in my um, catch basin. However, that ended up being more challenging and I just decided to use an external pump, which I'll talk more about in a moment. Finally, when looking at the parts washer as it originally came, there just isn't enough space in the shelf here to put a five gallon bucket. Buying solvent comes in these kinds of five gallon buckets, similar to the one shown, and it would just make a ton of sense if that shelf was a little bit lower, just so the bucket could fit in there. And then also so that when we're draining the parts washer, it would drain directly into the bucket. So there's about 10 inches here for me to lower the shelf. I don't want to go all the way down because I want to be able to have my feet underneath the shelf when I'm washing parts. I don't want to constantly be kicking the shelf, but we can still go down maybe six or seven inches and have plenty of room to put a five gallon bucket in there when we want to drain the parts washer. So the primary motivation for me was to make it so that it was significantly easier to drain. I'm not likely to be using this parts washer on a daily basis, and I just don't want to leave it full all the time. I want it to be easy to drain and easy to fill up. My other big motivation was to make it easier to clean. It would be really difficult to separate the dirt from the solvent. It'd be really hard to clean out the dirt from the bottom of the tank. It'd be hard to clean out the dirt from the bucket I'm draining the solvent into. So that leads to my second motivation, which is to set up a better system for separating the dirt from the solvent itself. Okay, so now let's take a look at what I ended up with. Inside, you will see that the pump has been replaced with three outlets for the um, new solvent pump system. I have a brush and I have the nozzle from the old one and I have uh, just an open valve on the bottom. You'll also see there's a air breather valve on the top and next to the other valve sets. Moving to the bottom, you can see that I dropped the shelf down and now I can fit two buckets down here. One bucket is the bucket that I'm using to collect the solvent and one bucket is the bucket that the solvent came in. Adding this valve here is the single best upgrade I made to this entire system. 
Way down here on the bottom, you can see that I also added four inch wood blocks to raise the whole assembly up a little bit and get a little bit more space for that mid shelf. You can see here that while I bought real solvent, um, this is, as far as I can tell, just kerosene. So just a fancy name for kerosene, maybe. Who knows if it's any different. The three hoses going into my collection tank are a breather and a the drain and then the pump pickup. Opening up the solvent reservoir on the bottom, we can take a look inside. In the very back there, you can see the vortex separator that I built for this project. Here is a closer look at that vortex separator. If you're wondering why my solvent is kind of a gross pea color, it's because the dye from the lid of the jar I'm using uh, was uh, dissolved by the solvent. One nice addition to the solvent holding tank and the vortex separator is adding a little bit of water in the bottom, which you can see right here. The water allows the dirt to fall down through the solvent, and once it hits the water layer, it'll separate out from the solvent. This will make it easier in the future to clean the dirt out. So I can just suck out all the solvent until there's only water remaining, and then once I remove the solvent, I can then remove the dirty water and dispose of it properly. Anyways, once we're done with that, we can just pop the vortex separator back in the solvent tank like so, and uh, that's how it sits. I do recommend wearing gloves because this solvent is pretty aggressive on the skin. If you guys are interested in learning more about the vortex separator, just let me know either by leaving a comment or sending me a message, and I will consider making a more in-depth video about this uh, particular piece. Okay, so back to the rest of the plumbing. Here is my pump, and you can see down here I have this filter. This filter housing is an oil filter relocation kit for a car. You can buy these in magazines like Jegs or uh, Summit Racing or anything like that. I added this filter because the pump I'm using is a gear pump, and gear pumps are not very good with dirt in the fluid that they're pumping. They want really, really clean fluids. So if you're keeping track, I now have at least three different filtering mechanisms before the solvent gets to the pump. This pump I chose because it is a pump that's rated for pumping kerosene or diesel. I chose everything here actually to pump kerosene or diesel, including the lines, which are all purpose-built fuel lines. As I mentioned earlier, I looked into a bunch of different pump options, and I ended up with this relatively expensive 12-volt DC gear pump as the final solution. The reason I chose this pump is because most of the pumps that are affordable are not necessarily rated for pumping fuels like diesel or kerosene. The other thing is a lot of DC pumps are really high flow rates, so I had checked a couple of different options and this one at 3.1 gallons per minute is one of the lowest flow rate fuel pumps that I could find. The solvent parts washer came with I think a 1 gallon per minute pump from the factory and the reality is that pumping rates that are much higher than that are just totally overkill for what these things need. So using a three gallon per minute pump is actually still too much and I had to tone it down with the use of a motor controller. Luckily, a DC motor controller is a pretty readily available and easy to wire and cheap to buy piece of equipment. You can see the dial for my motor control speed here and the wire goes down underneath and into this white box. This white box contains both the AC-DC power supply for the motor and the DC motor controller. I'm not going to open this box up because honestly it was a pain in the tushy to get it closed. So it's not really worth it in my opinion just to show you basically what looks like a laptop charger. I will of course have a link in the description to these parts that I used to put this all together. Just a quick word of caution, I did try a 10 amp power supply because the motor is rated at 10 amps max, but my 10 amp power supply could not provide startup current for the motor, so I ended up using a 12 amp power supply. That one works great. So we're back up at the top here, and uh, just a couple more things. I made this plate and attached it with magnets, 
This is an anti-vortex plate because I noticed I was getting a lot of vortex whirlpool effects at that plug, especially with the breather vent closed. So this plate just helps keep it from sucking air into the bottom of the system and allows the pump to run at higher flow, flow rates without creating a lot of bubbles in the solvent, as you can see in this video. Currently, the solvent tank is actually running at about half capacity. My tank, as you saw earlier, wasn't even completely full on the bottom. There's almost nothing in the top. And that's just one of the benefits of this whole system is that it runs on basically half or maybe even less of the solvent as a normal parts washer. Like I said earlier, I have about a gallon of water in the system to help separate out the dirt from the solvent. And there's a really big benefit to having the solvent stored in this lower tank where it can basically be sealed off whenever I'm not using it and preventing the solvent from evaporating off. This will extend the life of the solvent as well as have all the benefits I already covered earlier in the video. So that concludes the tour of my dry sump parts washer. Again, this project was a giant pain in the butt and um, I don't necessarily recommend it. It seemed like it had pretty low bang for the buck value, but to me, it also felt necessary. Normally, I try to distill my projects down into some really useful things that I can offer to help people who are doing something similar. But for this one, you're pretty much just stuck with this video and whatever parts I can link to in the description. If you have any other questions about how this works, let me know and I would consider doing a follow-up video to this one because there's so many elements to this parts washer and it's so complicated that I really can't cover it all in one short video. So if you like this, let me know, hit the like button, and uh, thanks for watching. Hey there! Do you like my t-shirt? I made it myself. Well, actually I didn't make it myself, I just designed it myself. But if you like it, you can check the link in the description and you can find a link to buy this t-shirt. This one, this one's just a prototype. I think it could be a little bit darker, or the line's a little more bold. Maybe raise this up a little bit. But, you know, if you're like me and you're a turbo nerd about cars or other elements of design and making stuff, then feel free to check out my t-shirt selection and, you know, buy t-shirts that only you and maybe a handful of other people will understand. Turbo nerd. If you like this video, please go ahead and hit that like button and maybe even try out that subscribe button. And uh, we can wait for the trash truck to go by. Or not. <laughs>